Therefore, now time for members' statements. The member from member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to commend a local initiative in my riding to help bridge the gap in mental health services. The Perry Sound Muskoka branch of the Canadian Mental Health Association has opened a once weekly after hours walk in clinic in Perry Sound. The clinic is funded in part by a local golf tournament, the Ridge Golf Classic, organized by the Ridge at Manitou. I want to thank the team at the Ridge for their dedication to this cause. Local people struggling with mental health issues have faced long waiting lists. A place where people know that they can seek help immediately will help many of my constituents. Research suggests that single session consultations can be quite successful, and for people who need more than one consultation, this clinic can help connect them with the service, services they need. This clinic is a great addition to Perry Sound, but being open only one evening a week means it can serve a very limited number of residents. Clinics like this one should not have to rely upon donations to offer these essential services. I'm proud that the PC party has recognized that mental health is just as important as physical health and committed to major investments in mental health services. I will advocate for clinics like this to be funded. I hope the new Minister of Health will consider funding this important project so that the clinic can be open more than one evening. I commend the community-minded individuals who, who have worked so hard to make this clinic a reality. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Oshawa. March 8th is International Women's Day, and I hope everyone is able to make it to events celebrating and supporting women and girls in their communities. I want to highlight an important campaign launched in Durham Region by the Violence Prevention Coordinating Council of Durham. The VPCC is comprised of 32 member organizations committed to addressing the issues of violence in our community. This organization supports women while planning community events and initiatives to increase awareness and make change regarding violence in Durham Region. From a presentation given by the VPCC, I'll share some of the realities faced in our area. In Durham Region, the police respond to an average of 21 domestic calls per day. 25% of all calls for violent crime are domestic violence cases. In Canada, a woman is murdered by her intimate partner every six days. In the last year, we have had four murdered women in Durham. Durham Region's four shelters housed 608 women and 320 children this past year. Even harder to imagine is that the shelters turned away 1,080 women because they were already over capacity. And the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives conducted a study and ranked Oshawa second worst out of 25 cities to live and work as a woman. Durham Region was ranked last for personal security. The Violence Prevention Coordinating Council is working with partners and community to change those stats. Join us in supporting the hashtag Love Shouldn't Hurt campaign to ensure that love doesn't hurt and to eliminate violence against women. Become a champion. Be part of the solution. Support this campaign and all calls to end violence against women. And because love shouldn't hurt, I will stand in this legislature and use my voice to help end violence against women. What will you do? Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Mississauga, Brampton South. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in the legislature today to talk about the Chinese New Year. It was my pleasure to attend the Mississauga Board of Chinese Professionals and Businesses, known as CPB Chinese New Year Banquet, this past weekend. Mr. Speaker, this year is the year of the dog, known to be honest, friendly, faithful, loyal, and smart. Dogs also have a strong sense of responsibility. I would like to thank UD Young, and the whole team of CPB for hosting such a wonderful event in my riding of Miss Saga Brampton South. All of the proceeds from this event <clears throat> went to the e Hong Center for Geriatric Care, which is located in my great riding of Miss Saga Brampton South. e Hong is a long-term care center and a nonprofit seniors organization which has been operating since 1994. E Hong annually serves about 15,000 individuals in the GTA. They provide a number of services, including adult day programs, active senior programs, chronic disease self-management, and many more. I would like to extend my best wishes to all those who recently celebrated the Lunar New Year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Thank you very much.
very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to speak about the 27th annual Godrich and Clinton Kinsman and Connect TV auction. I had the pleasure to announce the items in the auction, and let me tell you, there were so many good things, from a doll high chair that was handmade through to autographed basketball jerseys, gift certificates, and even vacations. In fact, more than 900 items were auctioned off thanks to generous donations from across the community. And, Speaker, this year, the Clinton and Godrich Kinsman and Connect set a new record. Their auction actually raised a number, a record number of donations, which translated into an amazing fundraisers for the club. These funds will be used to support local projects such as outdoor ice rinks, playgrounds, and community events. Also, the money will be used to support Cystic Fibrosis of Canada, the Kin Canada project that is supported by clubs throughout Canada, and in fact, they've been supporting cystic fibrosis for over 54 years, and over that time, have helped raise 45 million research dollars for cystic fibrosis. So, Speaker, I would like to recognize the volunteers, the community leaders, and everyone who made a purchase, and to all who participated in the 27th annual Godrich and Clinton Kinsman and Connect TV auction, as well as the volunteers in the nearly 500 kin clubs nationwide the work you do is truly remarkable, and we thank you. Well done, well done. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I dedicate my statement today to a senior, an 81-year-old former constituent and friend of mine whose name is George Raddick. George is retired, living on a pension. He lives at Anchor Point in St. Catharines and received notice for a rent hike in the retirement facility he lives in. The rent increase alone is 7.5%, well above the 1.8% limit for 2018 set by the Residential Tenancies Act and translates into almost $500 a month. My office contacted the Retirement Homes Regulatory Authority only to find out that Anchor Point is not considered a retirement home, as defined under the Retirements Act, because the home does not provide two of the 13 criteria required to have it regulated. That means it falls into a grey area that seems to allow landlords to bypass rent increase limits set by legislation, giving these retirement facilities free reign to charge whatever they please. We were told to contact the Landlord Tenant Board, but after two hours of getting a busy signal, we gave up. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of George and countless other seniors in our province who find themselves falling between regulatory gaps, will the ministers responsible, the Health Long-Term Care, the Ministry of Housing, responsible for regulatory changes, please review, amend the legislation to protect vulnerable seizures, uh, seniors such as uh, George Raddock across this province. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This Thursday, March 8th, marks International Women's Day. Since 1914, this important day has been celebrating women around the world. To pay tribute to this occasion, I will host my monthly art gallery at my constituency office tomorrow, Wednesday, March 7th. The gallery will exhibit the work of a number of women from the Toronto School of Art, a fantastic organization in my riding of Davenport. The exhibit will also uh, display several pieces of pottery from Inspiration Studio. For 23 years, the studio has supported hundreds of low-income women impacted by poverty, homelessness, trauma, and mental health issues in my riding of Davenport and across Toronto. The studio helps women learn to craft ceramic goods and develop business skills so they can earn supplemental income. As one member expressed, and I'll quote, I own what I do and I earned it. I'm in a happy place in my life. I haven't been homeless again. It has given me purpose. Inspirations saved my life. In 2016, the program lost its funding and was at risk of closing, but thanks to a rent commitment for sistering and almost $84,000 in funds raised via crowdsourcing, private donations, the City of Toronto, Friends of Inspiration Studios, and outstanding levels of community support, Inspiration Studio has secured the funds necessary, necessary to continue through 2018. And finally, the opening night for this month's art gallery will serve as an opportunity to formally recognize seven outstanding leaders in my community of Davenport. Mr. Speaker, indulge me so I can uh, list all seven. Foy Nying, Judah Mason, Lourdes Fuentes, Mariela Soto, Mary Oko, Angela Machado, and Alicia Vianga are all recipients of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Awards. Congratulations to them. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise uh, on behalf of uh, North Grenville residents 
who will be watching this year's budget closely for funding to finally expand County Road 43. Yeah, yeah. It may surprise a government so fixated on the GTA to learn this, but rural and small-town Ontario yep. have transportation infrastructure needs. Nowhere in my riding is it more evident than on County Road 43, a vital link between Kempville and Highway 416. I'm so proud uh, how Mayor David Gordon and his council have worked to make North Grenville one of the fastest growing communities in eastern Ontario. However, that growth and future economic development requires the province to be a partner in upgrading local infrastructure. For years, the municipality and the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville have identified expanding County Road 43 to four lanes as their top infrastructure priority. And for years, provincial budgets have come and gone with no funding for this badly needed $30 million project to get in gear. Speaker, uh, you know, quite frankly, the municipality is tired of waiting. On any given day, 18,500 vehicles travel this busy highway. There's congestion. It's a barrier to growth. It's a public safety issue for motorists and pedestrians. It puts them at risk. But you know what, Speaker? All the work has been done. This is a shovel-ready project. It's finally time for the Finance Minister to give the County Road 43 expansion the green light. Thank you, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. For the member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, March is lymphedema month in Canada and around the world. And I'd like to recognize the lymphedema community uh, as today, March 6, is World Lymphedema Day, which helps spread awareness about the seriousness of this chronic disease. Lymphedema is an accumulation of high protein lymphatic fluid that causes swelling in the legs, arms, trunk, head, or neck. It is a chronic condition. It can be an inherited condition or it can be acquired through surgical procedures, cancer treatment, or infection. It impairs the mobility and function and can cause pain and significantly impacts the quality of the sufferer's life. Many people who suffer do so silently. Lymphedema is not well known or understood by the broader community. Unfortunately, many of those who are diagnosed are stigmatized or marginalized in society as a result of their disability, and living with this chronic disease has a negative physical, and emotional, psychological, and financial impacts. I'd like to thank my constituent, Stephen Kellen, for bringing, this, for bringing lymphedema to my attention and uh, for bringing to me uh, his own personal story, uh, which is right com quite compelling. And I'd like to thank him for his strong advocacy on behalf of the lymphedema community. I'd also like to thank caregivers and family members for all the work that you do to help those who have been diagnosed with the disease. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements now from Stormont Dundas. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge the passing of a great champion of agriculture in rural Ontario from my riding in Stormont Dundas in South Glengarry. Noble Villeneuve, former MPP and Minister of Agriculture, uh, and for Francophone Affairs, passed away in Maxville just last Wednesday. Noble was born and raised on a farm in Moose Creek and began a career in farming and real estate before being elected to the legislature in 1983. Noble understood the issues facing farmers and was a strong advocate for rural issues. I remember meeting Noble at the Good Roads Convention in 1996 and saw firsthand his dedication and hard work that he brought to the job. He stopped into the warden's room one night to meet the constituents, but was whisked away by staff within minutes to his next meeting. As a Minister of Agriculture, he provided a strong voice in support of farmers of this province suffering from high interest rates and low commodity prices. Through his role in Francophone Affairs, he was instrumental in securing equal funding for French language schools. We will sorely miss his insight, wisdom, and integrity, as he was a role model for how elected officials should serve their communities and the province who was called upon to steward. Noble was a dedicated family man, and our heartfelt condolences go out to his wife, Elaine, and family. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.